I realized at some point that I forgot to apply the material ID colors to the high poly. So I'm going to go ahead and do that very, very quickly. And then what I'm going to go for here are just these colors across the top because they're so very different mathematically. Like this is going to be one zero zero, and this is uh, zero one zero and zero zero one. And then I don't know, yellow is like probably 0 0.510. So there, there's like big differences in the RGB values that are easy for the uh, uh, for the computer to to detect. That's machine eyes. So we'll go ahead and select the blade. I'm going to just randomly give it the color red. And then what I want to do here, actually open that menu and set this up so that I'm not closing it every time I use it, is these two handles are going to be the same material. So I want to make sure that I give them the same color. And we'll just make it yellow, and I'll hit apply. Looks like I hit the wrong button there. But one one thing that's worth mentioning is I combined the screws here, and I don't actually want those to be yellow. So I'm going to find a new color for them. Go back to mesh display, apply color. I think it might be the middle option. So in this case, I'll go to green. There we go. So that really all I'm looking for is I just want to have the menu stay open. So that's the middle apply. So I want the, these uh, bolts here to be the same material as the, the inset screws there. And then we need to come over to this side. I think that should have worked. Yeah, so now all of the bolts are the same material and the handle's the same material and the blade is the same material. So now we need a material ID color for our clip. Then we need one for the spacer. So lots of space here between these colors, again, and the RGB values. And I could just go ahead and export my selection. We're just gonna overwrite the, the uh, original knife height that we've already exported. And hop over to Painter. And so I'm gonna go to my bake mesh maps. I'm gonna select the ID and the default here is gonna be set to material color. I want it to be set to vertex color. And I could actually, to speed this up, you can just deselect these if you want. Just make sure you turn them back on if you need to rebake. So now we can see the ID here is updated and we can begin a quick texturing pass. So I like to use this little tool called Pure Ref for my, my reference stuff. It's pretty simple and I believe it's free. Whoops, let me put that back where it was. There's a couple things you gotta do. I think you gotta lock a few things. So let me just take care of that real quick. All right, okay. So I've just got the, the reference images here and you can see it's the same knife, but with the lighting, the materials look a lot different. So I just grabbed a few things here from the from the resources and we'll, we'll just figure something out here. We'll start with the, the handle. So I'm gonna make a new fill. We'll just call it handle. Also, um, one of the reasons I'm using this is because I have a limited recording space. Like I would usually just have the stuff up on my, up on my second monitor. So don't feel like you've got to get pure ref. If you have two monitors, just use that. It's totally fine. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and assign a, uh, mask with color selection and we'll pick our yellow for this stuff. And then I'm going to make it a little bit darker and it's got a little bit of a blue tint to it. Again, that might just be the lighting but I find a tiny amount of blue actually does kind of help metal feel a little bit more metallic. And we probably want to be somewhere in the middle range here in terms of the, the albedo color. And then we want to go all the way up with metalness. You can see that makes it a little bit darker. So perhaps we need to come in and kind of lighten that up a little bit. And it's kind of dull. So we'll go like maybe half, halfway there. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. So just hit uh, select the layer and just hit control D. And we'll go a little lighter just to get this kind of flaky thing happening. And then into the mask, I'm going to add a fill. And we'll just come over here and find some kind of a grungy, noisy something or other. That might be okay. So I'll just drag it in and you can see how that's kind of happening. Now, for some reason we're getting this mask is kind of speaking to everything. I believe that's because I need to set this to something like multiply or add so that it's isolated only to our handle. 
and we can see we're not exactly getting quite as uh, it's more like a cloudy effect here rather than something that's more speckly so we could probably find a better grunge that's a little bit more dirty so let me just see if i can quickly scan through here and find something that might work better yeah, that looks better fit potentially cool but maybe it's a little bit too small so we can reduce our scale a little bit in our UVs. Let's see, so that's like a 0.4. That might be okay. And I also want to come over here and increase the contrast so that it's a little bit more, a um, little more speckly and we get less, less of the middle grays. So to do that, you can just go to the, the fill layer and then come up to the balance. And you can start playing with some of this stuff here. We've got contrast. Start to get some of that. And maybe now it's like a little bit too big. So let's try like 0.6. And the read on it isn't going quite in the right direction. So let me come and maybe just rather than multiply, I'm going to look at this and we'll set that to add. No, that's clearly, or sorry, uh, yeah, that was definitely add, but that's wrong. We need to, it needs to be blended against the color selection and multiply is going to give us that effect. So let's look at the, the layer here and we'll see if we can brighten it up. Okay. So this is basically the top layer that we've, that we were modifying here, which is not exactly what I was going for. So I'm going to make the top layer a little bit darker. And then the bottom layer here, that's the one that I think is going to be poking through. So we can just brighten that up a tiny bit. And it might be like a little tiny bit of a difference in the in the specularity between these two material groups. So let's just change that just a little bit on the roughness. And then there's probably a little bit too much contrast. So let's try to unify that stuff just a little bit. All right. So we can do this clip here very quickly. That looks like a simpler material. Add a mask with color selection. Select blue. Go up to the material. Totally metallic. And this one's got a pretty dull finish on it. That's probably going to work for that. Let's take a look at our, our screws here. We got time to do those. Add a mask with color selection. Once again, increase the metalness all the way up. These are going to be a little bit darker. And you can see there's like a little bit of this kind of noisy transition there, and that's going to be between the material IDs. So if I hop over here and go to the material ID, there's like a tiny transition that's not yellow, that's not green, that's like somewhere in between. And that's what's kind of throwing that off. So tap the M key. So what we can do is just hop over to the color selection and then you can just increase the tolerance a little bit. We actually might just also be catching a metallic highlight there, which is going to be totally fine. But just in case it is, you see how we're kind of eating away at it there by increasing our tolerance. And then we can probably come over that's my guess is it's probably just the, the metallic stuff kind of kicking in there. Cool. All right. In the next video, we'll go ahead and uh, try to finish this texture pass up.